Hi, host Eric here, host of Talking with Famous People. And in this video, I'd like to talk about enthusiasm. Back when I was teaching middle school at Bay, it was five years ago now, 36. <laughs> I've been coaching debate for a few years. Yeah, it's my third year or fourth year going to nationals. And I had a student who was doing a speech that, you know, I didn't just coach debate then, I was a speech coach too. And uh, the speech that this student was doing was called Never Give Up by. Jimmy B, Jimmy Belfont. And I have worked with him with that speech so often. And it talks a lot about enthusiasm in that speech. And he says, Ralph Waldo Emerson said, nothing great was ever accomplished without enthusiasm. He's right. <laughs> I can hear Jeremy doing parts of the speech still. So there I was, it was that great locker room moment, the moment before the game, and I had it in my head. Your country, your religion, and the Green Bay, your country, your religion, and Rutgers basketball, your country, your religion, and Rutgers basketball. Finally, three minutes before the game, I go to burst in the gym, the doors are locked. fall down on the ground and all the guys, get the coach up, get the coach up, pump him up, pump him up. So I start pacing back and forth. I'm all hyped. I say, gentlemen, we will win today if you remember three things and three things only. Your country, your religion, and the Green Bay Packers, I told them. I did that. I said that. I can recite be parts of the speech still. Um, I probably don't do it quite as well as Jeremy may have done it, but uh, I cut that speech for him and we worked on it a lot. And uh, I didn't think a lot about anything the speech said. I wasn't in a position in my life where I was feeling much of anything about anything except I liked coaching debate. I wanted to try to win. I was pretty hardcore about that, right? But it still wasn't enthusiasm so much as it was terror. Fear of failure. Fear of losing. Fear of having my squad with me and going there and my squad discovering that they're underprepared. And they go, oh, maybe stress isn't that good of a coach. That kind of stuff. It drove me because it was real, right? It didn't ever drive me in teaching. But it still wasn't enthusiasm. Now, that doesn't mean there wasn't a bit of enthusiasm involved in it. That year at Dallas, Jeremy was being a pill. He was being a pill going into the tournament, just in the sense that he started shutting down. Like, he wouldn't. He wouldn't try very hard when he'd be in practice and he towards the end. Maybe because we had drilled it too much, I don't know. I mean, he wasn't showing me a lot. He had another speech that he liked better. And, and his declaration speech, the Jimmy B speech, he had another speech he liked better. In fact, Candace had it falling around. He's like, I don't want to do that declaration speech anymore. It sucks, I'm done with it. And. He almost wanted to stop going to his deck rounds because he didn't have enthusiasm. He didn't believe. He just knew that he had a shot at doing pretty well. You know, he knew that. He knew he was good. But he didn't know. He didn't know 
anything more than that, right? Like, and there wasn't a whole lot more to know than that, except just, you see, for people who don't really understand why their, where their own value comes from, where their own comparative achievement lies. Those individuals they have a difficult time applying themselves in full because they don't really believe. And of course, one of the most difficult things to do in life is to believe in the face of no positive reinforcing evidence. So it's like, oh, well, Strauss says I'm good. They don't believe me until they win something. Then they believe me. And even then they don't really believe me. They don't understand how much more clearly I understand everything that they do. It's impossible for them to understand that because, you know, they're kids and they're coming across these ideas in isolation. Uh, they... They understand little sub-circles of the system. And they think, they, sometimes they generalize wrong, you know, they generalize how things shouldn't be generalized. They, there's lots of reasons why they don't understand as well they, what they ought to be doing. I got really angry at Alice the other night because of her defeatist talk. She's still engaged in all this defeatist talk, and she's actually quite good. And I understand that the, the purpose of it is to... Um, depressurize yourself, right? Like, okay, it's less pressure on me now because I know I set expectations nice and low, so I'm going to try to do my best, but I get that. But I really think the self, self-defeating self talk is ultimately counterproductive. And what in the world? Is nobody honking? What's going on here? Why is nobody honking? What the fuck? This person just pulled right out of the jack of the box driveway, came straight out horizontal to the road, and blocked all three lanes of Rosemead's traffic. And nobody fucking honked. That is criminal. Because that person needs to be punished, right? They need to be shamed for that shit. There, there, there. Oh, well, that's old lady. I'm not gonna yell at the old lady. Although it looked like Zizek was in the car. Right? If it's Zizek, I should have yelled at them. I, they got a fucking spitting image of Zizek. I wish you could get a picture of him, actually. I gotta sit in the back. Why are you not going? <sighs> okay, so. Let's talk a little bit more about enthusiasm now that I've displayed what more accurately would be called yeah, which is not enthusiasm. I've, I've shown and talked about a couple things that are not enthusiasm so far. Let's talk about more things that are enthusiasm. Well, as it happened, Jer uh, Jeremy it made the first break. He made he he made the first break, which means of the hundred or so declamation speeches in the tournament, he's made it down to the top, uh, probably 24. Yeah, that's four room to six. Uh, so, basically, he made the top quarter. And we're super stoked because we know that this means he's going to get something. Well, he's going to at least get to walk around the stage and get a little plaque or something, which is good. Because we, we ideally you want as many of the kids to have a piece of hardware in their hand as possible, even if it's a little one, even if it's like, oh, you, well, you broke out of prelims, you get this little ribbon or something. It's better than nothing. It's better than not breaking out of prelims for sure, which 75% of the people do. 75% of the people don't break out of prelims and walk away empty-handed. So, something, a little something in their hand is it does have meaning. It, it, it is represented as something real. It's not like everybody gets a prize. And, and you're already, it's hard to make the first cut. Anywho, so, we were stoked. Jeremy uh, went to his, that would be his octave final round. Yeah. And Candace was there. I didn't get to watch that round, I think, be, be, 
because I was watching my debaters, of course. I was more interested in, even though I coached the shit out of Jeremy, and I mean, I worked with him a lot, and I cut the speech, you know, all that stuff. He works a lot of it at home, at home too. But uh, I was mostly interested in bum, 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 bum Dasha and Assad. Uh, probably my strongest entry with the strongest case I've ever had at any nationals. They were destined to win the goddamn national championship for a shizzo. We had it in the Tocqueville case. Lights out. We had all kinds of crazy shit going on. We were just too good. And, um, I mean, Josh is, I mean, Josh went on to be a TFC debater. As odds remains the most genius to have ever worked with. Regardless, he needs to be interested in. I'm not saying that's, 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 he, he's a real, really outlier ENTP. If he's a sixth grader, he wrote like me. He, 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 great. So we were going to win the debate now, so I was watching that at a big round. So, good news, Josh is on the advance, and we, we made debate, and uh, we made it from double octaves to octaves. And then it was a speech, and Jeremy advanced too. So now we had two people. Jeremy was in uh, quarters now. Uh, it was down from four rooms to two rooms. Uh, it was down from four rooms to three rooms. It should have been down from 24 to 12. Right. But was it, but there was a book to octaves. Octaves, quarters. Yeah, it's in quarters for for speech, right? That's what I said. All right, so it's quarterfinals in speech, and it's uh, octafinals in debate. And um, I watched speech this time. It's not at the same time. I was watching both. And I watched Jeremy. And in this room, there's another kid doing the same speech. But the other kid has to go first. And I watched the other kid go doing it, and I started off going like, oh, fuck, another kid's doing the same speech. For about a minute, and then I started smiling. Oh, this kid's no good. How did this kid break into fucking quarterfinals? I mean, he's clean-ish, but it's so wooden. It's so unnatural, you know? And so, what's but it's cool, like two kids later, Jeremy goes, and he does the speech way better. So I'm like, okay, that's a good, that's a good sign because the judges have, are, they can't help but be influenced by that. They give an extra impetus to vote for him because they see how badly the speech can be done, right? Or how a normal person does the speech, like normal good. Um, so, okay, because I mean, he was in quarters. He was solid, he was clean. He, he, he had all of his gestures Choreographed, it was fucking wooden as hell, but it was uh, practiced, you know. Okay, so then uh, debate uh, advances to quarterfinals, and as I thought, because fucking probably because there were two of the speeches in the room, is what I was thinking at the time anyway. Fucking Jeremy advanced to fucking semifinals. Oh, oh my god. I can't believe we, I broke a fucking speech kid to semis. That's insane. And so I go watch the, the quarters. And I'm not able to watch the semis of uh, speech, but I'm able to watch the, this huge fucking quarterfinal round of both forum. And that's me. And it's uh, the Dosh's parents. And it's Deets' parents, even though Deets wasn't in the round. But they were watching, his parents were watching the round. They knew it was a big round. It's my fucking beat. David Josh did not lose a regular season round. No, he didn't lose a regular season. Uh, he never got lower than first place in the whole regular season. He only lost one regular season round. The whole fucking regular season, that's how good this kid was, right? I wasn't even a very particularly good coach at the time. I was well, not as good as I am now. I, was, I, I tended to just say, like, we just fucking bully those people. We go, yeah, 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 yeah. Which is a dumb strategy, but I didn't know anything. You know, I was kind of making it up as I go. Same as I am now, but I have a lot more experience, so it's not really true when I say that. Um, 
<laughs> well, I watch Azad and Josh win that round decisively, definitively in my opinion, on the flow, win the round. And lose because Azad got fucking ENTP and he happy. So it's like bowing to the judges during the round and getting all fucking cocky and shit. It's Texas. He's got long hair. His name's Azad. And he introduces them with his middle name too. His name's like Azad Musa Musa Hisahib Dulat or something. It's some really fucking strange Turkish name or something like that. I don't know. But, um, he's such a. He's, I mean, I, I was like, there I am. But I was not anywhere close to that smart when I was his age, right? Like when I was six years old, sixth grade, I wasn't on a fucking, I'm nowhere close to that. Anyway, that's his odd. He fucked it up for us. We lost that round on a split decision. One of the judges said, he, he's that long hair kid with a bunny name, some manners. That was his feedback to me. And I was devastated. I mean, Weeping. You know, I went to go sit, talk to Dosh afterwards in his room. I was like, hey, man. I, and then we both just, ah, fucking sobbing. It was horrible. The worst way to lose a round. When you got a one, you lose on, on rudeness. You lose on stupid fucking idiot judges who don't know how to judge the big round. Anyway, uh, but lo and behold, Fucking Jeremy apparently kills it in his semifinal round, and he makes it all the way to finals. He's already top six in the country in this fucking thing. It's a declamation thing. It was a sort of an afterthought of panic through him. He wanted to quit at it before we threw cans and keep going in his rounds. And so he made all the finals. Now there's six kids left. So he goes, does a speech. And um, I'm watching my other kids in their finals. I also had kids in Congress finals. Um, but Congress finals is a bigger final, so it's not just six. It's like 15 people in there. And you got to get top four, so that, so it's a little more sketchy. It was super boring watching Congress. I wish I'd watch Jeremy instead. Regardless, um, they got out of their round. I got out of my round. We got out of our Congress round. And... Uh, Meet back and everyone's like, uh, well, where do you think, how do you think he did? Where do you think he finished? Um, and, uh, and you know, the kids are like, uh, third, second, I think, second. No, well, maybe, maybe fourth? And, yeah, you know, everyone's kind of, I don't know, he did well, he did well, but so many good people, uh, finally it's over for us, you know, that, that's the end of the tournament, and all the competition. Now all we gotta do is chill out. So I think I went to the bar and I slammed a couple of whiskeys probably. Thank God this fucking thing's over. Pow pow. But um, not a lot of them. Uh, because I was sober as I remember. Not a word ceremony. I mean, I, I was, at my recollection, not a word ceremony. I was stone cold sober. But I do also have a recollection of once we got out of that last round, I went straight to the hotel bar. Maybe there was a couple hours between it and that or something. So, uh, it's dinner time, we're relaxing. All that's left is to go figure out, you know, what you get, which trophy Jeremy gets, and then to pick up our quarterfinals and other kind of non advancing awards that we had going coming in. So, we had quite a few. We did well that year uh, in terms of numbers of kids getting something. A lot of kids got at least something. They advanced at least in one of their events or something. So, uh, we go to awards and time for the declamation awards finally. And they go through, they bring up all the non advancing. Uh, semi-finalists, all the non-advancing quarter-finalists, all the non-advancing octave finalists people who lost in those rounds, you know. And they say, okay, can we get the finalists up on stage? And they get six people up there. And Adam Jacoby is, is running the thing. Back when he ran it, was run properly and run well. He was great. I loved Adam Jacoby. Uh, I mean, he's still alive. He's just not involved in that. He's got his own, something else going on. 
similar feel, not the same thing. Uh, and, you know who else is there? Austin Coolsby. That's his first name? I think so. He used to be the economics advisor for Obama the first term, I think. Austin Coolsby. He was the his former debater, and he was just there to, I guess, he sort of waved to everybody and, hey, look, okay, it's a former debater, I'm going to be, and then he was there to show the sport, I guess. I, don't know. I think he was mostly there for the high school term, but he was from the top side of the So we waited, and out of Dakota, we read down the names. In sixth place, Jane Morrissey from South Moon Street Middle School. Blah, 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 blah. In fifth place, it's Joe Smith from Tennessee. Uh, Rob Tennessee uh, I'm like, oh my god, this is fantastic. He's got at least top four. It's amazing. Um, and number four, Warren Petunia from. God, now I'm stoked. I'm already in, in, in the four rounds. Like, yeah, because that's when the big trophies start. One, two, three. Everything after four rounds. If you're small trophies, you know? one of the big ones. You know, not for me, Jeremy's trophy, but I won. It, it's more like it's my trophies. <laughs> anyway, um, obviously Jeremy keeps the trophy. I think I just metaphysically it's mine. Uh, it's the schools. It's autonomy debates or the time for base whatever, however you want to think about it. So, I'm grabbing Candace's arm harder and kind of squeezing it tight. And now Jacoby starts, as he does in each event, when he gets down, he's gone through all those non-advancing people. When he gets down to the top few people, he goes real slow and melts it. Number three. Bro, connect it. And you see like the one girl on stage of the three remaining, they're all up there right, holding hands. The one girl on stage who's from Connecticut. <laughs> She knows that she didn't go any further. I'm like, oh my god. Either Jeremy's runner up, which is spectacular, or Jeremy's the fucking national champion. There's the only two possibilities. And Candace's arm is getting my, my fingers poke all the way through it and have ripped it from her torso. Basically, at this point, uh, got, I'm grasping like this, and fucking Jacoby goes, and in second place, from the state of Texas. Ah! <laughs> I was just, it was insane, right? It was, the, it was the greatest moment of my life. It was that. It was the greatest moment. Now, people say like, you know, oh, your birth of your child is the greatest moment. That moment almost caused me to pass out. I was looking down there, and the doctor had to move away from the ex-wife, ex-ex-wife, and go, are you okay, sir? Do you need to sit down? That was not a great moment when I saw someone who said, oh, God, that almost made me pass out. So I don't look down there, by the way. You don't want to do that. Just don't even, don't even want to. Um, stupid. What do you want to see? You already know what it looks like, and uh, yeah. the baby will win. You can look at the baby when it's all the way out. So the point isn't about that, though. Um, it was the most exciting moment of my life, for sure. It was. I had more enthusiasm to finally bring it back to topic in that moment than I've ever experienced in any one minute long stretch. It was absolute euphoria. You just won the national championship, Jeremy. And you know, when, when I called her, I called his mom. Actually, I, I called his mom and talked to her for about 30 seconds because she was, ah, 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 and then I had a photo of Candace, and then she blubbered, and Candace uh, just sobbing and 
with a shock joy, right? Well, of course, how could you have anything else than that? I mean, you've just proved yourself to be the single best middle school student in the whole fucking country at this particular speech event that is competed in by students all across the country. You know, granted, it's not like the national tournament has every single middle school in the country attending it, but it's still a huge field, over 100. Uh, right. I think I think that year was probably right at 100. They were closing it with 100 for a while. So, and it closed it with 100. Well, we can't use the phone getting out of the phone. So, okay. Um, that enthusiasm obviously doesn't last forever. In fact, it was also my, my absolutely my most heartbreaking um, getting back from nationals. I couldn't. Thinking about it now makes me sad. I couldn't sit in that airport waiting with the kids to get themselves picked up. I, I kept having to go outside because I was just crying so much. This was my favorite class ever. That eighth grade class was the best ever. In terms of just not necessarily the best class as far as debate goes or anything else, but uh, I'm still friends with several of those kids. You know, I'm friends with Tosh. I'm, I, uh, I'm friends with Deets, who's from the previous year, but uh, he hung out with that class. And, uh, what else do I know from that class? Oh, well, I mean, that class had, like, Jeremy Lennon, and it had all kinds of kids in it. And, uh, it was, it was a class mostly with boys. It had mostly boys on it. it. It was shockingly lopsided. There was a one class that was shockingly lopsided at, like, 20... 20 boys and five girls or something but and, and they were not an easy class but for the, the ones that I liked and the ones that they got along with me and stuff we got really tight you know we were good friends I've always considered the students my friends and I'm not I don't distinguish between that kind of friend and like well those are real friends there those are students um, I, 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 I'm unable to tell the difference for the ones I like, for my friends anyway, between those friends and some other friends. So, this video is unravels here a bit at the end, but I'll just say this. This wasn't intended to be a story about winning the national championship. So the only national championship I've won directly as a head coach. I've been the program architect of a program that won a couple national championships and multiple school excellence awards and all that kind of shit. I was the director. And I've had plenty of kids get close as a coach and director, but I've never actually had any entry that I was a direct personal head coach of, which is the person who should get the primary uh, credit. I was the official head coach in name on the squad when we won the Palsy National Championship, we won the Public Forum National Championship. I was head coach. Officially, those are my debaters, but Wheeler gets the credit for them, in my opinion, because he was the one who was doing all the casework and shit, and that's what matters, right? It doesn't, it doesn't matter whose name says head coach, and of course the debaters get the credit, but, you know, that, that's a nice thing. It's like there's no, there's zero competition between debaters and debate coaches for credit. They get credit in different countries. It doesn't matter. It, they, I give debaters all, every ounce of, of debater credit they get. And then I get all the coach credit. And they're different kinds of animals and they don't ever conflict. And so it's totally cool. You know? So, if there has to be a moral of the story or if I have to actually have a good ending instead of just rambling on forever, the ending is this. Just fucking take the chance of being shitty. Just be shitty. Be I be shitty because it's just this one one time. There's always more chances up at the plate, and if you if you just persist, right? If you just persist in trying, then can I park here? Hey, can I park here? Uh, yeah, we're gonna stay parked here. Okay. I think this wall parking along this wall is okay. Okay. Oh, along this wall? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I'm here. I'm here at the Oyster House. Uh, that's a 30-minute video. 
Let me just show you a quick shot of Dave here and Natalie, if I see her out there. Where are they? There's Dave and Natalie. Hey, Dave and Natalie, wave to the camera real quick, will you? <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching Talking Fans, people.